Many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be, will be first. Our readings today are speaking about the quality of sacrifice. Gospel reading, Peter is saying, well, what about us? We sacrificed everything for you. And in Jesus' response, it's not about what was sacrificed because you will get back wife and husband and house and car and these things in this world. What is it about? In our first reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, it says it about three or four times. It says it in the positive and then it says it in the negative. A man multiplies offerings by keeping the law. Man multiplies his offerings by keeping the law. Then he goes to the next level. He offers communion sacrifice by following commandments. Keeping the law, following commandments. It's going up. Huh? By showing gratitude, he makes an offering of fine flour. This has gone to the higher level. Keeping the law, following the commandments, gratitude. You all are with me so far? Yes. Gratitude. Then it goes on, by giving almsgiving, he offers a sacrifice of praise. We go up again. Remember Father Peter this morning talked about contrition, gratitude, and compassion as the three hallmarks of the spiritual life. And we see them here. Keeping the law, that's good, important. Keeping the commandments, that's important. Gratitude, almsgiving, that's another level. Another level of sacrifice. And then it comes, the text goes on to say, do not appear, withdraw from wickedness and the Lord will be pleased. With you. So this is a negative now. Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from injustice and you will make atonement. Do not appear empty-handed before the Lord's presence for all these things are due under the commandment. And then it goes to the virtuous man's offering. And it says it again, and it says it again. There's one part here where it says, a virtuous man's sacrifice is acceptable, his memorial will not be forgotten. Honor the Lord with generosity. Add a smiling face to your gift. How about that one? And add a what? Sacrifice has been a constant theme through every religious tradition. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, we know we had the fall. It ends with them being put out of the garden and the angels being put to guard them from going back in. Chapter 4, we start with Adam and Eve conceiving their children. And verse 3 of chapter 4, it just shifts and says that Cain, Abel, made a wholehearted sacrifice of his firstlings and he also offered the fat of his animals. Cain offered some of his produce. From the moment sin came into the world, sacrifice came into the world also. And the first thing that we learn about sacrifice is that you can offer a wholehearted sacrifice as Abel does or you can offer as the book of Ecclesiastes says, a stingy sacrifice. So either wholehearted sacrifice or stingy sacrifice. Sometimes we think that the greatest sacrifice that we are called to make is the sacrifice of our money or of our time. Those are big sacrifices, correct? Correct? Sometimes it's hard to give it, and you know which one harder to give than all of them? The hardest sacrifice to give is the one that we see Jesus giving on the night before he died in the garden at Gethsemane. He knelt down, he sweated blood and tears, and he said, Father, take this, 
take this chalice away from me, but not, but, but your will be done. And now we have what is a wholehearted sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world that we might have life. It's a sacrifice of a father who's sacrificing himself by giving us his son, knowing how we will treat him. The sacrifice of a son who is giving to his father everything and giving us love. The wholehearted sacrifice, it's a love offering. It's a love offering because it's not holding back anything to himself. It's a difficult offering because it's costly. It's costly. The bending of our heart to the will of God is costly. And that sacrifice, brothers and sisters, we are all capable of making it every single day, every single moment, in every single day. Amen? I ain't sure about that one. Let me try again now. Amen? Yeah. All right. We spent the day looking at leadership and discernment. And in spending this day looking at leadership and discernment, what we are recognizing is that whereas we might have been willing to give some money and we might have been willing to give some time are we willing to give the hard stuff, the real hard stuff? You know the old, the old conversation between the chicken and the, and the pig. They're heading down the road one day and they stopped and the chicken said, you know, I'm feeling real hungry, let's have some breakfast. The pig said, me too. They went in a place and said, well, what you're serving? And they said, well, we're serving bacon and eggs. chicken said, well, I find that's good. The pig said, you are right, yes. For you, that's only an offering. For me, that's the whole hog. <laughs> if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, a church of discernment, a church where we're putting God's will first, we can't be chicken about it. We've been happy to offer our offering to the Lord. And now we have to be ready, willing, and able to go to another level of discipleship. We have to be ready to offer the whole hog. What is hardest to offer? What is harder to offer than to bend your will to God's will? Can you think of anything harder than that? Anything? Anything at all? What if you imagine if we make a culture? of sacrifice that is wholehearted, that in every moment of every day, we are willing and choosing to bend our heart to God's will in things that are little and things that are great. In Ephesians 5, that wonderful text about marriage, St. Paul's actually starts off, and most people don't quote it, by saying husbands and wives, husbands and wives, Submit yourselves to one another in the Lord. What does that mean? It means that husbands and wives put God first and then you surrender to the will of God and to each other for the sake of the will of God. And that is what discipleship is really about. And that's what spiritual leadership is about. And that's what discernment and spiritual leadership is about. Discerning the will of God in things little and big and bending our heart towards that, no matter what it costs. Peter and the disciples are all in awe about what they've given up. Lord, what, look at what we have given up. Yes, and they gave up a lot. But you know it's possible to give up all of those things and not bend your heart to the will of God. Possible to give all those things and not bend your heart to the will of God. 
The greatest riches is not necessarily in wealth, you know, or in opulence. Sometimes the greatest riches is in our ego, and our ego position, and the ego position that we defend like a raging bull, no matter what. That sometimes is our greatest treasure, the I. And what Jesus is inviting us today in this day of discernment and leadership is recognizing that I must die so that he can live. And if I must die that he can live, I need his grace. Amen? Amen. I need his? Grace. Say it again. I need his? Grace. As so in this Mass, let us pray for everyone in leadership in our church. Those who are here, those who are not here. That we may have the grace to bend to him. That we may surrender ourselves to the will of our God. In things both little and in great. Amen.